Another glorious Marine Corps morning. God has been good to us. Shout out to all the first responders, military personnel, past, present, and the ones that's contemplating going in. God bless y'all and thank you for what you do. And all the uh, uh, police officers, nurses, paramedics, firefighters, thank y'all for what you're doing. And thank you all that are online this morning. We just ask that you, if this ministers to you in some shape, form, or fashion, please pray for us. And also please... Uh, Share it. That's how we build our, our base. If we're going to get up early in the morning and do this, we want to minister to as many people as we possibly can. So this morning we're going to Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles chapter 34. We're going to read just like three verses, beginning with verse one. Are you ready? Josiah was eight years old when he became king, and he reigned 31 years in Jerusalem. And he did what was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in the ways of his father David, he did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. For in the eighth year of his reign, while he was still young, he began to seek the God of his father, David. And in the twelfth year, he began to purge Judah and Jerusalem of the high places, the wooden images, the carved images, and the molded images. Josiah began to be a king at eight years old. Now, I wanted to I want you to think about this. The morning word this morning is heart. I want to ask you a question. Who was the youngest for you history buffs? I had to look it up, so don't feel bad if you don't uh, know the answer. I had to look it up myself. Who was the youngest elected president of the United States? The youngest elected president of the United States. It was John F. Kennedy. He was 43 years old. The youngest appointed president was Theodore Roosevelt. He was 42 years old. He was appointed after William McKinley was assassinated. Who was the youngest state governor elected? Stephen Mason, 35 years old. Who was the youngest congressional member of Congress ever elected? William Claiborne, 22 years old, younger than the Constitution actually allows. I don't know how they pull that off. 22 years old. But in our story, we have a young man who's eight years old. Now, we know he comes to be the king by inheritance. In other words, he wasn't elected to be the king at eight years old. He, he inherited the throne, but he became the king at eight years old. And you go, okay, somebody else is calling shots for him. He's just the king as, as a figurehead. But it tells us down here that in the eighth year of his reign, meaning while he was 16 years old, while he was still young, it said, he began to seek the God of his father, David. He began to seek the God of his father, David. Now, David wasn't his father. What it meant was David was his spiritual father. David had left a legacy of, of godliness and the, uh, the standard for being a king and a leader in the nation uh, through his walk with the Lord. Remember when God sent Samuel to anoint David, he said, I have found a man who it, who, who's after me with all of his heart, who loves me with all of his heart. And that brings us to the point. We in America and in general are always, when we begin to look for, for qualifications for people, for positions, and certainly in leadership, we're looking for people who have <clears throat> not only knowledge, but experience. Not only knowledge, but experience. We're always looking for the person who's the most experienced or the most, I guess you would say, prepared with regards to knowledge. But you know what? God, God doesn't operate by the same standards that we do. God's priority for utilizing someone in his work is not their knowledge uh, and not necessarily their wisdom, neither their age or experience. God is looking for someone who has heart. That's what God was looking for with King David. That's what God was looking for here with, uh, with Josiah. Josiah became king at eight, but he began to seek the Lord at 16. And let me ask you guys, how many of y'all were seeking the Lord at age 16? I wasn't. It says in age 20, which means he's been the king for 12 years, at age 20, he began to purge the land of all of its idolatrous practices. Shortly thereafter, they discovered the word of God that had been hidden and Josiah tore his clothes and said, my God, the wrath of God is upon our nation because we have disobeyed him. And he immediately began to institute spiritual reform. It was a level of revival, but it, didn't, it, wasn't, it was short-lived. 
but he began to institute programs and protocols and activities that were to turn around and to reverse uh, the cursed way, the disobedient way of his nation. You see, guys, when you have someone that has character, that's heart and integrity, uh, and with that comes faithfulness. You know, today in our world, we're always saying it's hard to find good help. You know, you can have somebody that's got all the knowledge and you can have somebody that's got all the experience, but they're not faithful. They're not honorable. They're not trustworthy. So what do you have? Someone that knows the ropes, somebody that knows how to do everything, but you can't hang your hat on them. God's always going to look and, uh, for and place priority on character, upon heart. And to have heart, it's simply in the Bible, to have heart means a willingness to follow God wherever he may lead. That's what heart is, a willingness to, to follow God wherever he may lead. That's the, that's the biblical definition of having a good heart, a willingness to follow God wherever he may lead. And number two, it's the courage, the courage, this is the deal now, it's the courage to make decisions, hard decisions based on number one, two qualities of a, of a biblical uh, leader and, and someone that God can use in his kingdom. You gotta have heart. That is a heart that seeks after God and is willing to follow him wherever he goes. And number two, the courage, the courage and the faith, the spiritual fortitude to make hard decisions based on number one, based on number one. How many of you um, make, have had to make hard decisions with regards to uh, how you're raising your kids? You see, Josiah, <clears throat> Josiah didn't just happen up on that. There was a legacy. When it says his father, David, when it says he, he, he began to rule and, and seek the God of his father, David, somewhere in the past of Josiah's life, there was a godly legacy. There was a God, someone in his family line that was a God seeker, a God follower, a God lover, and that was David. Now, we, you and I as parents, sometimes we fail and we think that we're the ones, we are the ones that are immediately responsible. We begin to think that the spiritual heritage of our children hangs solely on us. Well, listen, I got news for you. Uh, there's somebody in your family tree somewhere, you may not even be aware of them, but there's somebody in your family tree that sought God. They, they put some roots down before you got in the picture. And so sometimes when we fail to lead as, like Josh Johnson yesterday was giving his testimony. He said, I, I was providing for my family. I was loving my wife. I was raising my kids, but I wasn't their spiritual leader. Well, listen, the reason Josh now is the spiritual leader and the reason those kids are gonna have a godly heritage is because Josh has stepped up to the plate, but I don't know, I don't know Josh's family history, but somewhere in, down that uh, family tree, there was somebody that loved God. Almost, and if it wasn't, it was somebody outside of his family that was praying for people inside of his family. There's always going to be somebody that's praying for you, lifting you up, uh, going to bat for you, laying a spiritual foundation. And that's what we've got to get back to. We've got to get back to making sure that the highest priority that we have for our children and for the young people that are around us, not necessarily our own. Uh, prodigy, not necessarily those of our own family, but of the younger people around us. We've got to go back to character development. We've got to go back to spiritual principles. We've got to go back to the word of God. Let me tell you what's more important than a college educated person is a spiritually educated person that's got their heart right, that's got character. I can take a monkey and teach him math, but I can't make a monkey a dependable, faithful follower of God. All right, I can teach a monkey how to teach school. I can teach a monkey how to preach, but I can't give a monkey character. I can't give him a heart. I can't make him faithful. I can't make him a God follower. So we have, we've got the cart in front of the horse and we're more concerned about our kids uh, becoming, you know, uh, athletes and professors and teachers. And listen, guys, that's not wrong. That's not wrong. It's just inverted. It's just, it's, it's place in the pecking order has gotten too high. We're more concerned about trying to get our kids scholarships and 
and uh, championships and so that they can quote unquote make it in life. Listen, let me tell you what the world needs. It needs men and women, young men and women like Josiah who can look around them and say, this world is wrong. Young men and women who on their own initiative seek the Lord, the God, the God of their fathers the ones who are able to make tough decisions in following God. Listen, I was talking with our, in our small group meeting yesterday and I just was able to visit. I hope you don't mind me sharing this, Miss Amy, with Amy and John Lewis. And they said, you know, they've lived all all over the country and Amy was a missionary uh, uh, child and lived in uh, other countries in Africa. And and when they got ready to raise their babies, I, I had noticed that I had heard her say on a couple of different occasions, this is God's country, talking about Alabama. This is, this is the blessed land. This is God's country. And I, man, all I'm thinking about, I'm trying to get out of this place, man. It's hot. I want to go north where it's cooler. She said, this is God's country. And I, and I asked them to expound on that. And she said, this is the best place to raise kids. This is where there's still some modicum of uh, manners and uh, godliness and that uh, perversion and immorality while being present is not so openly promoted that there's still some traditional core biblical values. We're in the Bible Belt. So this was the best place to raise kids and they're so grateful for it. And so what that tells me is is that there's been a priority in their lives placed upon the rearing of their children, not just educationally, but uh, but emotionally and spiritually. That's where we've got to put the emphasis and we've got to raise them up to have some heart some heart, a heart that follows after God. I don't care if my children fold the sacks at Kroger that people get their groceries in for a living. I really don't care if they're happy and if they're born again. And I know that when they close their eyes uh, for the last time, or when I close my eyes for the last time, that my hope and my joy and my peace is in the knowing that their names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And that when they say goodbye to me, that they know I'm going to heaven. And when I say goodbye to them, God forbid, I know they're going to heaven. You cannot, that is the most important comforting factor in all of life. I don't care if they can throw a curve ball. I don't care if they can do a running triple back handspring. I don't care. I don't care if they make it to the White House uh, or, or uh, to the big house. You know, I don't care if they make something out of say name, which by the way, let me promote this. Uh, this is from the foster house to the white house, Terrence K. Williams. He's on Facebook a lot. And that this young boy was raised up in the foster system and was invited by president Trump to the white house and met him. And here, here in again, is just another example of, it doesn't matter where you come from. You can build character and heart into you people that are not even young people that are not even your own. There were people in his life somewhere. I haven't even read the book. I just got it in the mail this week, but there was somebody in his life that he mattered to, and they set about to uh, instill character and fortitude and, um, and godliness in. So th- this is what I'm trying to say, guys. Uh, we need the highest priority placed upon the heart of our children the character of our children. We need the, to form integrity in them, but not just in worldly integrity, godly integrity, that they began to seek the Lord on their own like Josiah. Yes, when he became king at eight, he wasn't the shot caller. He wasn't the shot caller, but there were people that were calling the shots for him. And when he got to a certain age, the scripture tells us here, it's age 16, he began to seek the Lord, the God, the Lord God, the God of his father, spiritual father, and also a distant relative, David. And he became a great reformer in, in the, the history of uh, um, Judah. He was a good king, a mighty king. And so here's the, here's the, the, the point, guys, that we need to walk away here uh, with. We, you and I, you and I need to try to figure out by prayer, pondering, meditating. What changes do we need to make or what things do we need to initiate so that we can begin to put the emphasis back on building character in our children that they would have heart. Remember now, heart is a willingness to follow God wherever he leads 
and the courage to make the tough decisions that enable them to do that. They need to have a heart that's willing to follow after God wherever he leads and the courage to make the tough decisions to do that. And so that's the highest priority that we need to uh, have for ourselves and for the younger generation, not just our children, but for the younger generation. Now, when you're going out and you're selecting schools and finding teachers and, and finding colleges and high schools and elementary schools and sports teams, try to find you, uh, f try to find places that have those kind of people in them. Try to find places that have those kind of people in them. You know what? You don't, let me tell you what's more important. And we, 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 our new beginning, you know, is, is uh, the, the covering for North River Christian Academy. And one of the things that we want to do as elders is to make sure that we have highly qualified teachers in our school and part of that, you know, college educated and that they have a teaching certificate, that they're certified to teach. But let me tell you what's more important than that. Character. 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 Calling. They have a calling and they have character. They have a heart for kids, a heart for God. Because listen, again, uh, if you give me a little bit of time, I can teach a monkey to t math, all right? But I can't get a monkey to have heart and character and integrity. I need a teacher that comes to school. I need a teacher that'll come to school and be prepared. I need a teacher that'll come to school and be prepared and has a heart for the kids that they're teaching. I need a teacher that'll come to school, be prepared, and have a heart for the kids that has a heart for God, that'll pray for their kids. Those are the, those are the most important things. I can, I can find a, a school teacher, okay? But I can't find a godly character, uh, school teacher filled with character. Those, the, those, and that'll do the right thing when nobody else is watching. That'll do the right thing for those kids that has the heart of those kids. That, that the C in the school, North River Christian Academy, the C is more important than the N and the R and the A. That's what we've got to teach. That's what we've got to teach. And so uh, I hope that you guys have heard this this morning. I hope that if, if you and I have gotten off track and maybe misplaced our own priorities, that that's the most important thing. Listen, and this right here cannot be replaced. That right there in prayer cannot be replaced in, in forming a, a heart, a character uh, in our young generation. Um, these higher education places, they're trying to suck the life out of our kids. But you, you, listen, we'll forge it in steel by the Holy Ghost and the truth of God's word. They'll never get it out of them. Amen. Hey, we love you guys. Uh, we'll be getting with you sometime this week in, in um, naming the next ministry that we're looking to support. Um, I do not have the full uh, amount. Uh, Chris, is, Chris is out. Uh, for a couple of weeks, and I don't have the full report uh, on how much we've raised for Dave Turner, but we'll be getting that to him this week. Thank you all for your support. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Good Lord willing, and the saints don't rise. Peace out.